I hope this is not a scary book. It's me, Brutus. I was just going to read The Wolf by Clark Nicholas Morin. Let's just get this book open, then we can start. There we go. Now we can start reading. I'm so excited to read this book. The wind is soft, but cold on the beach. I sit alone, staring down the river and across the lake. Rogers and Ryland should be here any minute. The beach is at the end of a side road far away from town. As I sit alone, one memory plays clearly in my mind. I was young, standing on this very beach and staring at this eerie island. Suddenly, I saw my dad running towards me on the road coming from town. The look on his face surprised me. What are you doing here? I sensed fear in my dad's voice. It made me nervous. Oh no, this is a scary book. The stairs coil in a spiral design with tall walls on either side that prevent me from seeing more than a foot or two before it makes another sharp turn. I get the idea that this house is like the island has been, somehow seemingly bigger once you step inside. The stairs continue to coil upwards, taunting me to find an end to them. At last, much to my relief, the last step and the beginning of the second floor appear. The second floor is a long hallway, with three doors evenly spread out across the right wall, and one standing solitary on the left. The only light is from a large window on the far side, casting the same dim light across the wooden floor, and draping the rest of the area in a thick shadow. Cautiously, I step off the last step, and into the wooden planks of the floor. I try to step as lightly as I can to avoid making any noise, yet the floor didn't make a noise. I crept silently towards the first door. I tried to spread my attention amongst all four doors. Every second not focused on one leaves me terrified of what might be behind another. The only comfort I find is trying to focus on the hallway as a whole, instead of separate doors. I can't focus on detail this way, but at least I have my eyes on all four doors. The almost grey light from the window continues to dance across its small patch of turf as I make my approach. Barely able to see where my next step will land, I focused on the doors and the window. Something about that small patch of light in all this darkness makes it almost impossible to look away. Now the light has begun to shift. A shadow stretches across the bottom. The silhouette is prickly, and two substantial points stretch out from the root. It is almost like grass, or fur on a wolf's head. In a panic, I fire my crossbow into the window. There was no glass, so the bolt flew through the open square silently, and just as it entered the open air, the shadow faded away like leaves shifting in the wind. Leaves. That must have been it. Just the shadow of the leaves on the tree outside the window. I think this book might be too scary for me, but I can't stop now. I reached behind me to grab a new bolt. I need to be more careful. I can't just waste shots like this. My hand is still shaking and I almost dropped the bolt I had selected. I try to will my limbs to be still. Stop shaking. There's no use panicking over that. No use. I pull the cord back, my hand still shaking, and place the bolt on the crossbow. I can hear my breath, quick and erratic, with short, shaky gasps for air. Trying to calm myself, I take a few deep breaths of air until my nerves calm down. My breathing returns to almost normal rhythm. I continue. One step first. My foot lands on the wooden planks without a sound, still silent, but the absence of sound makes me uneasy somehow. One more step. As my foot hits the ground, I hear a sound like a creaking door. I stand rigid, wanting to turn, wanting to run, but not able to take my eyes off the hallway and the doors that line its walls. Which one was it? I look for something, some sign to let me know which door has opened. Are any of them open slightly? No, they all look exactly the same as before. Nothing is new. But one of them opened. I heard it. This is driving me mad. I can't see anything to tell me where the sound came from, but it had to have come from somewhere. A horrifying idea comes to me. Maybe the sound came from behind me. I still can't move. Did it come from below the stairs? Has it gotten the others already? No. That doesn't make any sense. The creaking sound had been loud, 
I wouldn't have heard it that well if it came from below. Maybe it was directly behind me. I have to move. I have to see if it's there. I try to turn, but fear still has me locked in place. Mustering all my courage, I begin to shift my weight from one foot to another in preparation to turn. As I do, the sound returns. Once I hear it, my body freezes once again. No sooner do I stop, than the creaking stops as well. I hear it again. It's real. But from where? The sound is very close by. It seems to be right in front of me. I settle back into a defensive position. And as I move, the sound returns. But this time I don't freeze. I try to use the sound to know where it's coming from. But it doesn't make any sense. The sound seems to be coming from directly in front of me. Yet I can't see anything moving at all. As before, the sound stops as soon as I stop moving. I press my foot down onto the floor, and sure enough, the sound occurs. I lift my foot off the boarded floor gently, that same creaking following until my foot is completely off the floor. I take another step further ahead into a new board. Silence. Just a creaky board. I feel a little foolish, mo but mostly relieved. I continue on. The hallway isn't very long. After those first few creaky steps, I'm in front of the first door. I stand there for a moment, not wanting to take my eyes off the other three doors. I reach out to grab the handle on the door, still pointing my weapon to the hallway, just in case something should appear. Suddenly, the left door explodes from its station, splintering against the far wall. A fierce and angry beast emerges, like a wolf, yet not a wolf. Its legs, long, thick, and arm-like, latch onto the bare frame and wretch itself violently through the open doorway. The frame and surrounding wall crack and splinter to make way for its monstrous frame, with red eyes shining against night-black tattered fur. All in a movement, the beast turns towards me, continuing its spider-like scramble through the hallway that can barely hold its immense size. And a blink is right in front of me, lunging towards me with its massive, tooth-filled jaws, open wide to end my short life. I drop my crossbow and cover my face with my arms. I wait to feel the pain, feel its teeth tear into me just before I black out for good. I keep waiting, waiting, but it never comes. I look up past my crossed arms to see what the beast was waiting for. To my bewilderment, nothing is there, just the open, silent hallway. My legs buckle and I collapse into the floor. I sit on the floor, gasping for air, as though trying to breathe out all my fear as fast as possible. My lungs heave, and my hands shake violently. What just happened? I was almost eaten. But I'm still here. How am I not dead? I look up once more into the hallway. It is still and quiet, the same as before. The door on the left wall is still intact. What did I just see? Was it real? I check my arms, looking them over, still trembling but unharmed. It couldn't have been real. I'm fine. It's not here. Not yet. What was that? A werewolf! Run for your life! Hello everyone. I am Tucker Morin. Uh, Brutus is too scared to come back and finish the video right now, so I have to close out this episode of Books with Brutus. Brutus was reading The Wolf by Clark Nicholas Morin. This is a werewolf mystery thriller book that's still family friendly. You can find it on Amazon or on our Etsy store under five main names. Thank you, and we'll see you next time for the next episode of Books with Brutus. Next week, Brutus will be reading Baby Narluga by Tucker Morin. Don't miss any of our episodes of Books with Brutus, nor any of our other up-and-coming series and announcements. Subscribe to this channel.